um, August and September 2012 in our anticipation of holding a AC45 youth event in the middle of those two events. So um, the plan is we will start the week after the conclusion of the Olympics on August 17th and the final event will finish prior to September 23. I think that's right. Um, we also went through the logistical preparation um, as we pack up and leave here, um, what the layouts are going to be at the first two events. We've now completed our uh, tours of those events and, and um, we brought them up to speed with our planning of base layouts, shipping arrangements, etc., etc., um, that's, that's going into putting those events on the course areas um, that we will be using. We also, uh, at the final part, um, you know, the event authority, courtesy of Craig Thompson, um, briefed the teams on the progress of the event authority and I believe the event authority will be having a, a press conference next week. Stephanie, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So um, the event authority guys get to come down here for a second time um, and I'll leave all that to Craig but uh, things are moving along rapidly there. Last part of our briefing today was a, an update of the joint design program. Um, we introduced the designers that we've commissioned to produce uh, this design available to the competitors um, and the design teams here to watch the racing, look at the 45s and to uh, talk with some of the potential teams that might want to use that service. So that's sort of what we've been up to in the last couple of days. Um, and uh, happy for John to talk about anything to do with the race racing. Um, and this is John Craig, the Principal Race Officer. Sorry, for those who don't know John. Um, John is new to the America's Cup, I think, aren't you? Very much so. Um, John's been We've all raced under John's leadership at St Francis Yacht Club for many years. Um, John is actually Canadian by birth, I think, and uh, migrated to San Francisco. You must have been there for 10 or 12 years that I know um, He conducted pretty much every championship of any major ilk that's been in San Francisco, plus many other important ISAF uh, class championships. So we're very fortunate to have John on the... ACRN team leading us. Paul Fisher. Very good morning to you, Mr. Fisher. I didn't know you got up this early. For you, Ben, I'll get up any time, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, by the way. Um, oh, good old. <laughs> um, yeah, people are having a lot of fun over that. Yeah, we are. Um, John, um, uh, is very familiar with San Francisco and certainly holding races, um, events, um, dealing with the planning and environmental side of San Francisco is a new dimension to all of those words and having the experience of John on San Francisco Bay and the relationships with the Coast Guard, the pilot bars and all the other users of San Francisco from the kite borders to every other sailing club is a tremendous asset for us. So, John Craig. Thanks, Ian. Um, one of the things that uh, this test event has provided an opportunity for us to do is to take the technological side of the sport to kind of a new level. Um, Ian mentioned earlier that there's a lot of prototypes, and uh, with uh, the innovation from uh, a gentleman by the name of Stan Honey, who I'm sure you all know, um, and his work in a company that he uh, started in, which was Sports Vision, which draws the yellow lines on the American Football League um, pitch, as well as the glowing hockey puck, um, as well as NASCAR tracking. Um, the technology that he's brought to us has changed the way that uh, we can actually run the races. And um, that comes in many shapes or forms. Originally, Stan's um, vision was to do a live overlay of the 
yellow lines onto the TV. So basically the images that are coming from the, the helicopter or the TV cameras, they're able to put a live overlay of the zones um, for rounding the marks, over, overlaps, and um, additionally um, the starting line. So OCSs and all of those things that uh, sometimes the human eye has a look at. Um, the, the, what he's been able to do is to bring it within two centimeters. And so the tracking is accurate enough now that uh, through our testing here, uh, we'll confirm that we can use it for calling the line over early, who's not. It's also enabled us to create uh, virtual boundaries, which we're using to keep the boats together. As a lot of you know, um, catamarans, due to their speed um, and also um, the length of the course, have the ability to get pretty wide. Um, one tax on port, one tax on starboard, and the two aren't together until they get to the windward mark. Um, what we've done with these virtual boundaries is created an arena that forces the boats back into the center. And so by doing so, it's going to create more crossing opportunities. It's going to keep the boats um, in a position where tactically as well as um, visually, they should be together a lot more. Um, so by using these systems, um, the boats now know when they're approaching the, uh, the boundary line and they have to tack. Um, on the umpiring front now, um, basically uh, with the tracking as accurate as it is, um, we can uh, send it to the booth. So these boats go really, really fast. And for umpires to make a call while they're chasing in a rib going 23 to 25 knots, uh, trying to get into the right position is pretty difficult. Um, this tracking has enabled the umpires to actually sit in the booth and the booth is on shore and is a place where these tracking and chart overlays and everything is coming in to the booth and they are making a call uh, whether there's boy room or whatever the case may be uh, room at the mark, room at the limit mark um, where to tack, room to tack and so all of those um, requests are being made electronically um, by the boats. Um, they're pushing a magic button and say, I have a Y flag protest or a red flag protest. That goes to the booth. Uh, they review it and then we'll declare whether there's a penalty or not. Um, in addition to that, um, the backup is we have uh, two umpires that are following the boats uh, currently in jet skis. Um, and uh, they, they seem to be surviving, so we're happy with that so far. Um, and they also provide insight into what's going on the course. But ultimately, it's um, the booth that is making the call. So these pieces, plus the actual um, tracking on the boats themselves, um, within two centimeters, a lot of the data that we're getting off of these boats will enable us to better figure out what course type we should use, how long the course should be, and to hone our time. Because one of the things that we want to be very accurate with is how long these races take um, with respect to the media um, and television. And the closer we can get that time to where we need it to be, the happier everybody will be.